saw the uh, title of the symposium today. It is we've got new innovation in applied research. Um, thought I'd try to work this all in and the way we think about it. And if we're all still awake after this break and what Joanne and Gord were just talking about at Make Plus, I, I, I'm in Make Plus as well and I work with all of them very closely. And, and you know, our process is very similar, except we also bring in graduate students and other universities and other partners as well. And um, but in general, we're, we're kind of thinking about the problems in the same way as, as Make Plus does with that, that project that Joanna presented just, uh, just a, a little while ago. The Red Lab, um, for those that don't know, it stands for Rehabilitation Engineering Design Lab. And so we work on assistive technology. Um, I'm going to be talking all about wheelchairs today. Uh, and we work on several other projects as well, but I'm going to focus on uh, wheelchairs today. Um, one slide of background. Also, when I say R&D and research, in the, in the top right corner of most of my slides, I'm going to have like an R with some other, and maybe a D and some other things on there just to kind of denote whether I'm talking about research, am I talking what kind of research am I talking about, and whether I'm talking about development. In this case, this is just some background research. Um, you get one slide, and, and that's just talking about uh, when we're thinking about wheelchairs and, and, and making them better. Um, it, it's best not to think about just moving a wheelchair because um, look at what we're all doing right now. We're all just sitting around, and I'm sitting around, you're sitting around, and then after this meeting, you guys are going to get up and walk to your cars or to the bus, and then you're going to sit again. So basically, most of the time, we just aren't moving, and really about 10%, 10 to 15% of anyone's day is actually moving, and the rest of the time, we're doing something else. And so we like to think about wheelchair design, about maybe what else we're doing in a wheelchair, and not just moving it, but I will show you examples of how we think about moving it as well. Um, so there's the D for development. Uh, just before I came to BCIT, I developed this wheelchair that I'm sitting in here. It's called the Elevation Wheelchair. Um, it's been commercialized. I'm going to put the mic down just for a second and show you two things it does. It lets you change the seat position and the backrest position on the fly while you're sitting in it. So I can change the seat. I can change the seat really easily. Get down nice and low for wheeling or move it up higher or anywhere in between for other activities, so whether I'm talking to you or reaching a shelf. And similarly, I can move the backrest as well. So this chair was developed. It's been commercialized by a local company called uh, PDG Mobility. Um, and now I'm going to talk about some of the research we've done since then uh, about how chairs like this are being used in the community. And we, we, we're doing that for a couple different reasons. One of them is for funding, actually. Um, when you introduce a new product on the market, um, uh, prescribers, clinicians, and funders will look at it and say, well, this costs more than something else. Why am I going to pay for it? And so it's nice to have some evidence that it does something useful, and, and they'll be more likely to then buy it. That's uh, one reason. Another reason is, again, how are things really being used? Um, and are we, are we kind of hitting the right notes? Are we doing the right thing? Or should we be doing something a bit different? So here's, uh, here's my R sub N, and the N stands for quantitative research, because I'm going to show you some of the qualitative research we do as well. Um, this is a study um, we did uh, a few years ago now, just got published last year, and that was asking, like, how do people use their chairs? How and when do they actually move their chair, um, the, the seating position anyways? And so we used data logging. We instrumented a wheelchair up so we could tell how far people wheeled and also when they moved their chair and what position they sat in all day essentially, and uh, I'm not going to get into too, uh, too deep into the data. Um, oh, I will point out that the, the red lines in the top left, that's kind of the, the, the seat going up and down over uh, several days, and the blue line's the backrest, so people don't move the backrest as much as they, they do the seat. Um, and then I'll also point out the two, uh, the, those two people on the bottom, one of them, on the, the guy on the left, he's sitting up really high, as, as you can see. He's actually standing almost in his wheelchair because he has the function to be able to do that. And the, the person beside him is using his chair more like I do. He, uh, if he got up as high as the other guy, he'd, he'd fall out of his wheelchair probably. Um, so the point is, we, you know, the, and we have data to show that, that people use things differently, um, again, depending on their, their function and, and, and what they're doing and, and what they want to do. And that leads me to the next slide, which is this um, qualitative research study. Because um, it was great to know how often people would change their seat position during the day, but what would be even better to know is why they were and what were they doing when, that, when, when those changes happened. And so Joanne and, uh, led a study with some occupational therapy students at, at UBC. Um, and basically, it's a pure qualitative study now that 
that the Make Plus group is, is, does as well, asking people questions about what do you do in your wheelchair? How, tell us about it. Um, what does a typical day look like? Uh, what activities do you do? And, and, and tell us about some of the unique things that maybe you do that maybe other people don't do. And, um, and three, and when you do this kind of research, you get, you get pages and pages and, and hours of, of, uh, of transcript about what people are talking about. And, and then the students and Joanne and those researchers analyze that and, and compile it all into themes. Yeah, so we can actually talk about something useful. And in this case, we came up with three themes. And the first one was talking about uh, function and participation. And here's just some examples of different activities, different functions, different ways people are participating. Um, whether they're reaching for something, they're using their chair at work in different unique ways. Um, in the community, reaching for things. Um, leisure and rec, there's a guy playing pool in his chair that, uh, that he, he couldn't do in a conventional wheelchair. Yeah, just, just a few examples. Um, an, another theme was about comfort. People change their position for comfort. And I can look out at, out, out at you people right now and I see a few people fidgeting, a few people moving around. You'll probably change position as I'm talking. Um, Again, something that we all naturally do right for comfort, but most wheelchairs actually don't let you do that. Um, and the third theme, I think, was really the most interesting, and that was psychosocial reasons, how people like to move into positions that are, are more, uh, more as part of the group. Whether you're standing, you can get up a little bit higher to be um, interacting with someone a little bit better. People talked about how you can communicate and hear what's going on and, and engage with people a little bit better that way. And these are some of the quotes that, uh, that came out of it, people treating me more like an adult. Uh, this is a funny one, you feel a bit more like you're part of the human race. Um, so that, that kind of, I, I think, again, that's really interesting, again, when you're, when you're kind of sitting much lower than everybody else, you're often treated a bit differently. Um, here's a, uh, a different type of study now that I'm gonna play a video, hopefully. So this is Dr. Yvette Jones's work, uh, who's in the room here from Make Plus. And those that know Yvette and, and know the capabilities of Make Plus, they have this really cool motion capture lab. And Yvette instrumented up uh, a wheelchair so you can actually measure the push rim, how much force people are doing. You can get this, this motion capture, the people moving their arms, and you can also, and she also does EMG, so she's measuring muscle activity. And uh, I don't have time today to get into all, all her data. I'll show, I thought I'd show one slide. This is a very busy slide, but the take home message here is if you look at the orange kind of circular looking thing and the green circular little looking thing on the right, those are two examples of muscle activity and they're much, much smaller than their respective other circles around them. And that's just indicating that, um, and I didn't actually say what we were actually measuring. I should start with that. We were measuring how, when you get into different seating positions and you wheel up a ramp, is there a more advantageous position? Is there a more efficient position to be in to wheel up a ramp, for instance? And so the, the orange circle and the green circle are indicating positions that are, um, seem to be using less muscle activity to get up the same ramp. So we would then surmise that that's gonna be a bit better for your body and a bit easier to wheel in your community if you're, gonna not, you're not gonna be using the same uh, muscle activity to, to do so. So I'm just jumping all around. I'm gonna show you another study um, that took, uh, took place at SFU. Um, and uh, this one was in Victoria Clayton's cardiovascular health uh, lab. And she simply looked at changing your position in a wheelchair, does that impact your your cardiovascular function, and in this case, uh, heart rate and, and blood pressure. And this ends up being a bit of a cautionary tale. Like if you actually, uh, you can imagine, especially as people age, when they get up really quickly in the morning, some people feel faint, some people actually do faint. And same when, when you're sitting all the time, you stand up really quickly, you, can, you might feel faint. And that's what this study is all about. Uh, if you change your wheelchair position, what does that do to your blood pressure? Then don't worry about all those, all those bars and all the data, but the, the point is that there is a cautionary tale to it that for some people, depending on their disability, uh, sitting up very high might make their blood pressure fall a little bit. On the flip side, coming down very low, like this, for, for those who have ever seen wheelchair athletes, often they sit in these positions, and this actually might increase your blood pressure. And by increasing your blood pressure, that might make you um, be able to wheel a little bit more powerfully, a little more efficiently. 
So there might be some good and bad here. Um, here's another study that was done at SFU. Um, again, and this was also done here with our motion capture lab where uh, Louise Thomas, a graduate student, rolled a wheelchair, um, one of these wheelchairs, down a ramp with a 100 kilograms of weight on it that is like a person. And there was a little uh, lip at the bottom of that ramp. And then she was testing to see what would the wheelchair do when it hit that little bump. So imagine I'm wheeling down a hill right now, and those little wheels, those little tiny caster wheels at the front hit a rock or something. Am I going to pitch forward and come out of my wheelchair? So that's what we were studying. And it turns out if you get into different positions, like for instance, uh, coming down really low and reclining quite a bit, um, it's a lot safer to go down a, down a hill. And uh, that graph is showing you know, the, the, blue, the blue areas are areas of different seating positions and different speeds where you'll roll over the bump. Um, I forget what all the colors are. The red is bad. You don't want the red at all. <laughs> the red, you'll pitch forward and, and you'll come out of the chair. And so we're trying to avoid the red, basically. And, and the green and blue is where we want to be. Um, the green, you actually, the green, you roll over the bump, and the blue, you actually just stop. And stopping's okay, because you're not going to fall out. Um, but the red, you'll tip forward, and, and the yellow, you'll actually tip over backwards, actually. So uh, these, are, these are two we want to avoid. Um, here's an R&D uh, project that we've, we, we started a few years ago. Um, Again, around similar ideas about changing your seat position. I mentioned this chair I'm sitting in has two different uh, functions, the, the seat and the backrest. This, this project looked into a third, and that's lowering the front end to the ground, and that's what we call kneeling. And we came up with this prototype that, that does that. The side effect of it is it actually folds up into a very tiny little package that might be useful for putting it into your car, for instance. Um, and uh, we're not going to go into too much details right now, but uh, there's a picture uh, with Joanne. She probably didn't know I was using that picture. Um, and and one, of our, uh, one of our subjects uh, transferring to and from the floor. And that would be one reason why you might want to lower your wheelchair to the ground to get to the floor and back. For instance, maybe when you fall out of your wheelchair, which does occur. Or you want to get down low and do an activity down low or play with kids, that sort of thing. Um, another... Uh, area research uh, that I've taken part in is collaborating with uh, a group in Winnipeg, University of Manitoba. And in this project, we instrumented up people for an entire year and, and, and monitored how they use their wheelchair in good weather and bad weather. So Winnipeg is, uh, as we all probably know, has a lot of really bad weather, um, at least very cold weather and, and, and snowy weather. And they have well over, uh, I believe, 200 days a year under zero? I have to, um, I forget that. They have a lot of t days under zero, and they have a lot of days with snow on the ground. And so we got some really cool data where we can compare how people wheel outside and inside as well um, in different climates. Um, and that's what those little uh, those icons at the bottom depict, you know, summer, spring, winter, and, and, and fall. And you know, to no, really no one's surprise, we, People wheeled a lot less in the winter and in, in when the weather was bad. Actually, not necessarily in the winter even, but whenever the weather was bad. Um, so it's really no surprise, but it really helps um, Jackie, who's this researcher in Winnipeg now, who's really pushing a policy uh, um, process where um, she can make some claims now that people aren't actually leaving their community or leaving their homes and getting into the community, which is, has all sorts of problems and maybe pushing some policy where we can get better transportation for people or we can get better uh, snow clearance and these sorts of things. And then from our point of view, it gives us a lot of evidence and a lot of fodder where, so we can do some more R&D and say, well, what if we can come up with some, some wheelchair tech, wheelchair developments that can actually help people wheel outside in the winter? And, and that leads me into this little final uh, project I'm going to tell you about now that we're really just embarking on now. Um, and, and what we're doing here, and other people are doing it as well, is that we're taking a manual wheelchair and we're adding things to it to make it perform better in different environments. Um, in this case, we're starting with a scoping review to look at what's, what's out there, what's on, what's on the market right now, and there's a variety of different things. Power wheels, um, wheels you put on the front end to lift those little casters up, because these little casters actually um, are much of the problem when 
when you're dealing with, say, sand or snow, these sorts of things. And so if you can lift them up, and in this case, put some big wheels on the front, that, that can solve a lot of problems for you. And if you can then uh, partner that up with some power, that might help you get into a lot of different uh, areas that you n normally can't get into. Um, we've got a couple of students uh, working on these projects right now. Um, we benchmark existing products. Uh, again, this is just part of our process. Um, in this case, looking at power. What, what, what kind of products are on the market and what kind of power um, will they give you? Um, that's one example. The other study we're doing, um, actually people mentioned some standards. I think Shannon mentioned some standards. Joey mentioned some standards today. Um, there's wheelchair standards too about how wheelchairs will perform and whether they're, they're safe and that sort of thing. Um, what's not done right now in, in our industry is when people are putting on these attachments to wheelchairs, do they impact the condition of the wheelchair? Um, will the frame break, for instance? Um, and so we're studying, we, we've started a study recently to look at that, and that's what those two bottom pictures uh, depict. Um, and we're doing new design as well, and don't bother reading the text. So the point is, and Joanne showed that other slide about the design requirements, part of the process where we want to build something new, or we have to define what we want to build first. And that leads me to my last slide here, where I, I acquired some spy footage of a, uh, I'm, I'm joking, but um, of a, a wheelchair. This is actually me in my wheelchair I'm sitting in right now, but with, with some attachments to it in a very snowy uh, place, and that's Sun Peaks uh, in Kamloops. So I'm actually moving this, this wheelchair, actually the very wheelchair I'm sitting in right now, up the mountain. Uh, which is which is very cool. And the other cool thing about that, that's the wheelchair I'm sitting in with some attachments that are easy enough to put in a car. And, and so we traveled up there with my wife and our two kids in, a, in our boat golf wagon with enough equipment that I could then uh, wheel around the mountain in snow. And we've also used it on, I've also used it on beaches too, on Kitts Beach for instance. Um, and so th these are a, a set of components and, and hopefully uh, products in the future that we want to be able to, uh, to commercialize. And uh, I'm going to end it there with uh, our last slide with just all our partners and, and, and funding and that sort of thing. And let's uh, take some questions. Thanks. So how do we test the durability of, of, of wheelchairs? Um, if you ever come by the tech center or the carry, the carry lab, we have a double drum test rig there that is a, an ISO certified test rig. And we, this wheelchair, for instance, uh, when a new wheelchair hits the market, it has to be certified by a lab that tries to simulate about five years of use. And it does that by running it on these things, these double drums, which moves the wheels over little bumps hundreds of thousands of times. It takes about a week to actually run the test. And you see, did anything break? And invariably, many things break. Um, but you know, uh, again, to get to market, to go get through FDA approval in the US in particular, you have to show that you can pass these tests. And that, that's, that's one way to do it. Um, before that, though, if you're actually um, doing development, you're doing some, uh, some R&D, uh, this is a, uh, just a, a finite element analysis where mechanical engineers can just do things in, with computers and simulation, put different loads on it and see how the frame will bend and, and the stresses that, that might arise.